to my channel so today's video is basically just me sitting here chatting with you guys talking about all the shows that I've been catching up on because um, there's a lot to catch up on since I got back from my vacation and back to work and to my routine so let's start with Apple TV I'm finally caught up with Ted Lasso all the episodes um we are on season three which they say it's the last one but we'll see if it's the last one maybe they'll do a movie after season three you know in a couple years ted lasso it's like comfort food for me you know it's like an easy watch it's a feel-good show um but this season it's just i don't know it's just it's not up to part with season one and season two and a lot of people are saying that they have this gay agenda i i don't think it's an agenda but it's just it's feeling a bit forced for me i'm all for um colin coming out as gay you know my favorite episode was actually the one that they were in amsterdam and then he confines in trent the reporter who is also gay uh, but he hasn't come out to the team yet um i i loved his storyline the one with keely and jack her boss um, Jack is the investor of Keeley's PR company. That little fling slash mini relationship, I didn't like it. I felt it was it was forced. I'm glad Jack is out of the picture because last episode they broke up. I mean, she's in, I don't know, some other country for two months, but she is Keeley's boss. So they will have to either talk to each other or see each other at some point. I don't know, once again, I did not like that relationship. And also with Ted, his relationship with Michelle, you know, they're going through a divorce and co-parenting Harry. She's in a relationship with Dr. Jacob. It feels very meta to me, like to the point that I don't like it because, you know, um, Jason Sudeikis is going through his separation um, and legal stuff about child custody with Olivia Wilde. And then she got with Harry Styles it's just there was one episode it was maybe three episodes ago where ted it's on his computer and he's like skyping michelle and he says to her and jason sedeck is one of the writers of the show so i wonder if he wrote that bit he says that michelle i love you i love our son i love our family no matter how it looks like and then he's explaining to her that the whole her getting with dr jacob um he was caught by surprise and he didn't appreciate that and the whole time that ted was talking to michelle i could see that it was almost like jason talking to olivia like olivia i love you i love our family no matter how it looks like but with the whole harry styles thing i was caught off guard by that and i didn't appreciate it, it feels like too close to his personal relationship to the show do you guys feel the same thing um i mean i don't know if people that watch ted lasso follow the gossip news of you know actors personal lives so you know maybe people don't even know that that's going on behind the scenes but i don't know i still love ted lasso um i still watch it oh and there's another storyline at ted lasso that i do not care for it's nate storyline i have i think it's so boring that at one point i fast forward a little bit yeah, so I do not care for what's going on with Nate right now. I'm happy for him that he's dating the hostess of his favorite restaurant. You know, it's great, but I don't know. There's something about his story is just like me. And then while I was on Apple TV, I finally watched that movie Ghosted with Chris Evans and Anna de Armas. If you know me, you know my celebrity crush is Chris Evans and my girl crush, celebrity girl crush, it's Anna de Armas. I love their friendship. I think they're great together as like, you know, buddy buddies. If you watch their, you know, when they're doing press for movies, even like Knives Out, I thought they were so cute together and not in a romantic way. I never got like romantic chemistry between them, but like a friendship, like buddies. And then I saw them promoting Ghosted, same thing. Like I love the, them together, but not as a couple. And it shows in this movie. They have zero chemistry oh my gosh this movie was so bad it was just it was so bad i don't i don't even have words to describe how bad this movie was it felt that it was written by 
chat G GPT. What is that AI thing that everyone is like, you know, talking about it now? Chat GPT. Yeah, it seems like it was written by like an AI. The script is so bad. The dialogue is awful. The one-liners are like cringy worthy. It's just, uh, and then we, oh, we have Adrian Brody with this like weird French accent. That one point I was like, is, is he just doing it on purpose to like make a mockery of the character? The CGI, awful. It was, uh, there's like the last like fighting scene where they're in um like a space needle like type of restaurant that goes around and around at one point i was like why don't you just show the green screen because this is so bad that you know i you can like what just you can tell that the green screen was there oh and then the fighting scenes the choreograph oh it was awful for me like fighting choreograph has to be two things it has to be either um like humorous you know funny because you know some like jackie chan chris tucker type of like fighting that you laugh and it's funny even though it's well done you still laugh or it has to be thrilling like a good fight scene that you're like oh, oh it gives you like all the emotions you're like oh 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 the fighting scenes in this movie were just like so bad and not to mention the believability is that a word like the fact that the movie is not very believable like Anna the Armas she's what five five or something like that she's very tiny she's very petite and you're gonna tell me that this girl she's like flipping all these like 200 pound men and fighting like three of them you know good for her that she knows the martial arts and you know like fighting techniques and all of that but i find it hard to believe that that little girl can take down like a 250 pound man with two guns and i wonder if the fact that i didn't like this movie as much as i would have liked to it's because i think it's such a ripoff of and people are saying it's a ripoff of mr and mrs smith i don't think so i was like maybe a little bit but no night and day with Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz. It's such a good movie. I watched multiple times. I laugh as hard as the first time that I watched it. It's such a good movie. Like Cameron Diaz in Night and Day was at the top of her like comedic career. And Tom Cruise too. Tom Cruise is really funny. So when I watched the trailer for Ghosted, I was like, this is a ripoff of Night and Day. Are you kidding me? So that bothered me. Next, we have HBO Max. Let's talk about one of the best shows out there, Succession. Ah, oh, I'm loving the season. And I'm gonna try not to spoil it, even though I think it's been all over social media. If you like Succession, you, you've seen it already. There is a big death in the show. I think it was episode three, because it was right mid-season. Yeah, it was episode three or four. Uh, a main player of the cast dies, and it was the best television episode I've seen in a long long time so after this character dies I was wondering like how are they going to continue on how is going because you need an like some sort of antagonist you know like that main player but the show is just as exciting as it's ever been like the last episode with um Shiv and Tom fighting in the balcony just give Matthew and Sarah their Emmys already it was it was so uncomfortable to watch that scene when they were fighting because they're really digging the knife on each other. It was just like, oh my goodness. But it was so worth it. It was brilliant. That scene was like the, the acting, the writing, everything was like brilliant. And then we have Love and Death on it also on hbo max the first three episodes came out on a thursday when it premiered and then now it's um one episode every thursday it's about a true story of candy montgomery if you're not familiar with her she lived in this little is it texas yeah a little texas um town two couples candy and her husband betty and ellen Candy has an affair with Ellen, um, even though they're, you know, they're friends, they live in the same neighborhood, their kids play together. Candy has an affair. Um, after, I think maybe it was a couple of years of having that affair, they break it off. Ellen starts working things out with Betty, was to work on his marriage. And then Candy goes to Betty's house at one point and they had a confrontation. And then Candy kills Betty with an ex. She hits Betty like 41 times, 42 times. Yeah, uh-huh, crazy. But anyway, going back to 
Love and Death. When I saw the trailer, it's with um, Elizabeth Olsen, who I love, uh, Jesse Plummett, who it's a brilliant actor. Whatever he's in it, watch it. He's great. And it's also um, produced and written by David E. Kelly. If you don't know David E. Kelly, he's behind The Undoing, Big Little Lies, um, what is the other one? Nine Perfect Strangers. Oh, and Nicole Kidman is a producer too on um, Love and Death. But anyway, I watched the trailer and I was like, I gotta watch this. This cast is amazing. The story about like true murder, crime, whatever, like right up my alley. And then when I watched the, I didn't know what it was about. I didn't know it was about Candy. And then I watched the first episode and then when they say her name, Candy, I was just like, Candy Mo Montgomery? that candy wait and then I, I started like putting the dots together and i was like then hulu just had a show named candy and i went on hulu and i was like yeah the one with jessica bill and i remember um when that show came out with um jessica bill um i wasn't that interesting because i i felt so saturated by hulu's content that it was even though it was great content they would pick one big name actor and put in this like true story we had you know the dropout dope sick the girl from plainville there was one with um andrew garfield and they were all great shows but it was just like oh it was too much for me i think jessica biel she's a great actress given the right role if you've seen the sinner it's on netflix now um bill pullman she she's an ep on that show jessica and she was on the first episode she was so good like i was like surprisingly good as she was in candy but anyway so i thought i was like should i watch the one on hulu before i watch love and death but i watched three episodes of love and death and i was just like you know what let me go on hulu and see how long are the episodes and how many there are only five episodes which makes me think like what were they able to do in five episodes on hulu that hbo because i think there, there would be nine episodes eight or nine on love and death so they had to stretch out the story for eight or nine episodes and hulu only did in five so i was curious five episodes i can do that in like one sitting in one afternoon so i started watching binge it it flew by and once again jessica bill so good she first of all she looks just like candy you know she rocked the perm because candy montgomery she has like short hair and curl like she had this perm like little curls big glasses the whole show too it's very grainy it's set in the 70s and the colors are very like mustard like almost like yeah it feels very 70s which i appreciate it as in love and death it's very glossy but just like any dave david e kelly show it's very you know pretty and and glossy that's the word i can't describe i don't know why elizabeth olsen didn't rock the perm why they didn't change her hair wasn't it her contract because from the beginning to end she has the the straight cute little bob or the little ponytail and if you know the story of candy the 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 real woman she had the, the curls and then when she goes to trial her lawyer tells her that she needs to change her hair to something softer so people see more of her soft side so that's when she straightens her hair and goes with a cute little bob it's kind of distracting to not see elizabeth olsen not look like the real candy and by the way if you try to google schmoogle candy Mon montgomery and where is she now i went in the depths of the internet and could not find a picture of her like where is she now so apparently after the trial she changed her name moved towns and <laughs> became she became a mental health counselor this woman that killed another woman became a mental health counselor I just noticed that I didn't finish doing my nails, so I'm, I'm sorry. And it looks like I have different colors and it looks like I'm like I have missing fingers. Ooh. I'm not finished, of course, with Love and Death because we have more episodes to come. But so far, I liked Candy from Hulu more. And I didn't think I would because you can totally tell it's a bigger, bigger budget. That HBO Max has on Love and Death. You like you can see it. And Hulu was a lower budget. 
but I don't know. I think maybe it was Jessica Biel's performance. So, um, let's go to Showtime. I am watching Yellow Jackets right now. I love the first season. Season two has started not up to par to season one for me. The first couple of episodes were not that great. I'm actually behind one episode because I didn't watch the one that came out this week. Um, the last episode that I watched was Shauna having her baby in the cabin in the woods. And that episode was really good. It was so, so good. And thanks to Sophie, Sophie Tled, hold on, I'm going to start looking people's names so I, I don't butcher. Yeah, Melanie Linsky plays Shauna as an adult. And then Sophie Nellis plays Shauna as a teenager. That girl gave an amazing performance. It's like the end when she she's holding her, spoilers, her dead baby. And she's like telling everyone the cabin and she's like crying. Can't you hear him cry? Why can't you hear him cry? You can't hear him cry. At the end, she slightly looks towards the camera and she like, she looks at us, if you notice. And then she says like, can't you hear him cry? It made it up for the slow episodes at the beginning of the season. I also loved um, Elijah Wood relationship with Christina Ricci and Misty. I think Christina Ricci, it's so good on the show as, is it Misty or Misty? It's Misty, right? Yeah, it's Misty. She's so good. She's so funny. Let's move on to Hulu. Besides Candy, um, I highly recommend. It's a quick watch. I am watching Taste the Nation with Padma. Oh my gosh, here we go, another name. Lush, Lushmiki, look, Padman, top chef Padman. First of all, she's beautiful to look at. I mean, I sometimes think I watch that show just to look at her and her clothes because I love her style. I love the first season of Taste the Nation. And then this one, I feel like we're getting more history. I'm learning so, so much about different cultures. So the episodes of this season is the first one. I have my list here. The first one, she goes to Puerto Rico. Did you know that people in Puerto Rico, they are American citizens, but they cannot vote for president. Isn't that crazy? And then the people in Puerto Rico, they want to be independent. They want to have their own um, independency. They want to have their own, like be their own, their own country. And I'm all for it. I think Puerto Rico needs to be independent and do whatever they want to do because you learn a lot about their food import and export. And then there's something, there's a tax law or something that makes it really hard for them to survive on their own resources. It's crazy. Like, you know, it's a lot of politics involved too, but very interesting episode two she goes to the african community in dc oh african food it's so good google um african cuisine in your hometown i'm sure you find it and go try it out uh and then she goes to little ukraine in east village new york i mean one of the things that they say that you know, it bothers Ukraine people is that people assume that they're Russians. If, as far as the food goes, I didn't like that episode because it was all about borscht. It's um, their, their beet soup is their signature dish in Ukraine and it is really bright red soup. And maybe because I don't like beets, but every time they're eating that soup, I was like, oh, I was just like, no offense to people in Ukraine. I just don't like beets. And then we go to Houston where there's a big Nigerian community. One of my favorite episodes, the food looks delicious. The people are so joyful and happy and dancing and uh, upbeat. And then she goes to the south of uh, San Francisco, the Bay Area, which there's a big Filipino community. She goes to Florida, which is the Greek. There's um, the Greek episode. There's a little island or like beach community in Florida that there was a lot of Greek Im um, immigrants. So she said, if you, if I didn't tell you I was in Florida, you would think that I'm taping the show in an island in, in Greece. And I love Greek food. Oh my gosh, I was salivating on that episode. Then she goes to Detroit to have um, some Arab food, which I love too. I have uh, two close friends of mine. One is from Lebanon and then the other one's from Palestine. And uh, the one from Lebanon, every time we had someone's birthday, she would cook like this big feast of like hummus, baba ghanoush, tabbouleh, um, grape leaves, falafel. Oh, everything was so good. Same with my friend from the Palestine. She, oh, did I, do you say Palestine or Palestine? I should not, I think people say with different, like different accents, but you know, like, forgive me if I said it wrong. 
but she same thing she will cook a feast because we work together and then the last one she goes to little italy in new york i highly recommend if you're a foodie if you enjoy food porn um if you like you know different cultures and traveling um and a lot of history i recommend taste the nation on hulu um oh and then amazon prime um i'm watching air i haven't finished but um the about the nike and michael jordan it was on theaters it has been on theaters for a while and then it just dropped on um on amazon prime a couple days ago it's so interesting to to learn about the business side of, of things especially like sports stuff that i don't know even though they drop a lot of famous names from you know sports people and i have no clue what they're talking about it's still an interesting movie um but if you're a sports fan you you're gonna love it and then we go to netflix there's also queer eye queer eye came out with a new season i cannot wait to watch i haven't started because i have you know so much catch up to do but i'm gonna um, start watching queer eye next week there are in new orleans this this season so mother the Jennifer Lopez movie was the movie of the week for Netflix, the new movie. Um, I was going to review that movie, but after I watched the trailer, I just don't want to watch another movie that J-Lo, it's all dolled up, trying to play tough. I mean, haven't we seen enough? No pun intended, but that's the, the movie. Remember that movie that she's in an abusive relationship and she, um, she learns like self-defense? and she you know has the horrible like short wig um it was it was an okay movie but i watched the trailer and that seemed like okay this is enough with guns she's trying to protect her daughter like she wasn't enough i saw a scene where she's in the wilderness like she's i don't know in alaska or something but she's like in the middle of the snow she's hunting and she's fishing and she's like being a survivalist and she still has full foundation on her face this beautiful head of hair extensions. I'm sure it's in her contract to look that pretty. And also it's probably in her contract to every movie that she's in to have a butt shot. Because on the trailer for Mother, there's a scene where she's going up the stairs and she's in this like um, salmon color, like peach silky dress. And the camera goes like right in her butt. I was like, really? I know, I know it's your brand. We all know your butt is your brand. But do we have to see like a close-up shot of every movie that you do? Hustlers, I understand, show all the butt and the boobs and the word you want in Hustlers. But also in um, Shotgun Wedding too, she has a scene where she's trying like pretend to pick up something from like the shelf and you know, just to flirt with um, Josh Dumel. And then the camera, yeah, it's like right on her butt. And I was like, we've seen, we, we, we've seen enough. Jennifer Lopez used to be a good actress. She, when she was Jennifer Lopez, I think when she switched to being J-Lo, that she's always gonna be J-Lo. But she's like too scared to be vulnerable and raw. And you know, when she got so upset that she didn't win an Oscar or like at least a nomination for Hustlers, I, why was she surprised? I was not surprised at all. That movie wasn't that good. It was an okay movie. Constance Wood, 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 Constance Wood, she, she was good in it. But the whole movie just felt like a long J-Lo music video. That's basically what it was for me. So I wasn't surprised that she didn't get an Oscar nomination. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that she did get a Golden Globe because I don't even think that was deserving. I wasn't going to review it, so I wanted to see what people were talking about this movie. So I watched a couple of reviews. Someone in a comment said something that I could have written that because I've always say that. They said, J-Lo's problem is that she never wants to be fully raw. What did I say? She doesn't want to be like raw and vulnerable. Even Beyonce wasn't afraid to look a mess in Cadillac Records. I haven't seen Cadillac Records. Is that a good movie? Let me know. You have to bear it all, especially for a role like this. She wants an Oscar so bad, but this movie choices would not get her there anytime soon. So, so true. Like she, she wants that Oscar so bad, but she doesn't want, you know what she needs? She needs a monster's ball. Remember Halle Berry? won her oscar for it and she got down and dirty and gritty and uglified herself jennifer lopez would never ever uglify herself the the most she would do it's once again put that like awful wig from enough i don't think she would ever chop her hair off for a role i don't think she would ever lose weight or gain weight 
for a role, but not one that, you know, hustlers, yeah, she gained muscle, she being, became super fit, but I mean, she, she wanted to look good. I'm saying like, uglify herself. She would never do it. So I can't tell you much about Mother because I haven't seen it and I don't want to see it, but if you have watched Mother on Netflix, let me know in the comments down below. What did you think? the shows on most of the streaming services that I have been catching up on I would love to hear your choices and your thoughts like what are you watching right now is there anything out there that I didn't mention that you recommend and you like me to watch let me know in the comments down below and if you like this video make sure you hit the thumbs up subscribe to the channel and also hit the little bell the notification button so you don't miss any future videos and I'll see you next time